So what we're going to do is start up with something relatively easy. What if we have <clears throat> 1 16th, now that's a fraction, so I know that looks ugly, but we're going to take the fourth root of that. So how do we do it? Now we're going to be learning how to deal with fractions and radicals a little bit later, but for now, just try to do a factor tree. You know that something times something has to equal this, and the answer that comes to mind is 1 4th times uh, 1 4th, because you know that in order to multiply fractions, you multiply the numerators, that would give you 1, multiply the denominators. Now the problem is you're looking for a fourth root, so you're not looking for a square root, so you, you can't stop here, but you realize then that the 1 4th can be written as 1 half times 1 half, and then this will be 1 half times 1 half, and you found a, 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 a 4 or a set of 4, which is what you need for a fourth root, so the answer is 1 half. All right? Now the reason again that, it's, that the answer is 1 half is then because 1 half times 1 half times 1 half times 1 half gives you what's underneath there, 1 16th. All right, let's do another fourth root problem. What if we had 81 over 16? And we're going to take the fourth root of that. How do we do that? So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to try to think of something in our factor tree that can multiply together. We know that 9 times 9 is 81. We know that 4 times 4 is 16, so we're going to do 9 fourths times 9 fourths. We multiply those together, we'll get it back. But then we realize both of these are perfect squares, so we have 3 halves times 3 halves. This one will be 3 halves times 3 halves. And so again, we have a set of 4, which is what we need. So the answer to this one, you just count one time, of course, is going to be 3 halves. And that's the answer. Again, because if you take 3 halves <coughs> times itself, this many times, you're going to recover what's underneath there. Now, so far, so far, these have been perfect. Perfect fourths, if you want to call it that, because the answer you got, even though it was a fraction, was a nice, <clears throat> nice numerator and nice denominator. But what if you have 1 16th, and you're going to take the cube root of that? How do you do that? So, we'll do a factor tree, right? We know what can multiply to give us 16. Let's do something like 1 4th times 1 4th, because 4 times 4 is 16. 1 times 1 is 1. Okay, great, but we need 3 of them. So we're going to break this out to 1 half times 1 half, and that's still not a triplet, so we're going to break this to 1 half and 1 half. Now we finally have a triplet. We have <clears throat> 3 of these guys, which can be grouped together. That's a triplet we're pulling out, but they only come out one time. So we have 1 half, but I have this left over. He's an orphan, just like in the square root case. He stays underneath the cube root. It's still a cube root problem, so whatever is left over stays under a cube root. So the answer you have is 1 half times the cube root of 1 half. Now, one thing I want to talk about is, in general, when you're, um, <clears throat> when you're simplifying radicals, in general, you don't want fractions underneath your radical, right? So what I've done here is I've left the answer as 1 half cube root of 1 half. It's not so much that it's wrong, this is absolutely right. Okay, it's totally right. But as a, as a matter of convention, generally you don't want to have fractions underneath radicals, and also in general you don't want to have radicals in the denominator of a fraction. So like 1 over the square root of 2, generally you don't like that. It's just a mathematical convention, you don't want to do that. So later on down the road, I'm going to teach you how to get rid of the fraction that's in here. And if you have a radical in the denominator, I'm going to teach you how to get rid of the radicals in the denominator. But I can't do too many things at once because I'll lose people. So right now I'm trying to get you to focus on how do you figure out what the cube root is. This is true. It's absolutely true. But there is a way to simplify this a little bit more that we're going to get to a couple lessons from now. So keep that in the back of your mind. All right, the next thing we're going to have for the next problem is again going, notice we're doing a parallel with what we did before. So let's go and take this 81 over 16 and let's take the cube root of it instead of the fourth root of it. What are we going to get? Well we have exactly the same thing. We can already tell what's going to happen. We have exactly the same factor tree. So just to make it clear, we'll have three branches of, or four branches of this tree. Three halves times three halves times three halves times three halves. Now I, I wouldn't have been able to figure this out straight away without doing this problem before. I know what it equals, so I can see that. But now that it's a cube root, I'm looking for triplets. So I see a triplet here. So I can pull out a 3 halves. Whatever orphan is left over is going to be left under the cube root, which is 3 halves. So the answer is 3 halves cube root of 3 halves. This is the final answer. Again, you don't generally want fractions underneath your radical. So I will teach you later how to simplify this further, but in order to do that, I have to introduce some more properties of radicals, which we, we don't know yet. So for now, it's totally fine to leave that. This is the mathematically correct answer 
but it's just generally not fully, fully simplified the way we like it to be. All right. <clears throat> All right, the next thing we're going to do, let's go down here and just work a couple of quick ones. It's going to look like this. Let's say we have 10 to the minus 3. Remember, we can have negative exponents as well, and we're going to take the cube root of that. Now, a lot of students, when they see a negative exponent, especially underneath a radical, will be like, whoa, I have no idea what to do. But don't forget what you've learned. Negative exponents are just fractions. You move that exponent to the bottom of the fraction and change that exponent to be positive. So even though this looks scary, what it really is is 1 over 10 to the power of positive 3, and you're taking the cube root of this. So these two are exactly the same thing. Now that you have this in place, you can start thinking about a factor tree for it, right? Because you can, even though I know it's 10 to the power of 3, you can convince yourself that this is 1 tenth times 1 tenth times 1 tenth. Why? Because 1 times 1 times 1 gives me this. 10 times 10 times 10 gives me this. So that's a valid factor tree. I'm trying to find a triplet, which I exactly have here. So the answer is exact. It's 1 tenth. And that's the final answer. Right? So that is something you have to kind of get used to. When you have fractions, you might have to kind of do things that aren't, don't look so pretty, but it's not going to be that bad at the end of the day. And we'll do another one right next door. Actually, I'm not sure I'm going to have room for that. So let me go over to the next board. Instead of 10 to the minus 3, let's do 10 to the minus 6. And we're going to take the cube root of 10 to the minus 6. So again, this is a negative exponent. The way you write it is 1 over 10 to the positive 6. And you take and apply this as a cube root like this. So again, we're going to learn how to deal with fractions a little bit more robustly later when we talk about other properties. But for now, just try to write this factor tree out. So you can see that this is going to be 1 over 10 cubed times 1 over 10 cubed. Why? Because 1 times 1 is 1. 10 cubed times 10 cubed, you add the exponents, you're going to get the 10 to the 6th. But i got to keep going because I need 3 of them. But then I see this is going to be um, 1 tenth times 1 tenth times 1 tenth. That's going to give me 10 cubed on the bottom and 1 on the top. And then this one is written exactly the same way. 1 tenth times 1 tenth times 1 tenth. And what I'm looking for is a cubed root. I'm looking for triplets. Here's a triplet and here is a triplet. They only count one time each. So when I pull it out, it's going to be 1 tenth from this one times the 1 tenth from this one. And so I'm going to get 1 twentieth. <laughs> Not 1 20th, sorry. Everybody makes goofy mistakes. You're going to get 1 100th because 10 times 10 is 100. Another way to write it is 1 over 10 squared. However you want to write it. 1 over 10 squared over uh, 1 over 10 squared or 1 over 100, however you like. However you like. Don't write it as 1 over 20 because obviously they're multiplied. They're not added together. All right, now if you remember at the end of the last lesson, I introduced some some properties when you're generally trying to, when you have cancellations going on, what I call cancellation, you know a square root is kind of the opposite or can cancel with a square. A cube root can cancel with a cube. A fourth root can cancel with a fourth power and so on. But there were some gotchas there with the absolute values. I really encourage you to watch the last lesson because I explained that in great detail. But I left that last board up over here. Um, and unfortunately, I actually sprayed the board to kind of erase it, and then I realized I wanted to keep it. So it's still readable, but it might look a little bit weird, especially up here. But this is what I was talking about before, and I've already gone over this entire thing in the last lesson. So if you haven't watched the last lesson, do it now. But I'm going to leave this on the board because we're going to solve um, a couple of, of uh, problems that are going to really require us to think about it, about those rules that we used before. Okay? What if we have 7 cubed? And we're going to take the cube root of that. So we have a cube kind of canceling with a, uh, I'm sorry, cube root canceling with a cube. So we had the case of when we have the cancellation going on, if n is even and when n is odd. And we said when we have a cancellation going on with cube and cube root or fifth root, fifth root, when it's an odd power, then all we get back is what's on the inside. No absolute value, no worrying about it. It always comes out so that you get exactly what you have on the inside. So when we have a cube root canceling with a cube, we just get the 7. We don't have to do any absolute value weirdness or anything like that. Now, a similar problem would be, what if we had negative 7? And we have that cubed. And we're going to take the cube root of that. What happens? Well, everything's exactly the same. It's a cube root canceling with a cube power. And we're just saying whatever is in here comes out. 
In this case, it was negative seven, so what we're gonna get is negative seven for the answer, and that's the final answer. Now, if you don't wanna think about it in terms of that, you think of it as a factor tree, right? How do you get negative seven cubed, right? Well, it's negative seven times negative seven times negative seven, right? I'm looking for triplets, so I can circle the whole thing, it comes out as negative seven. So that's why you can have, um, well, I don't want to get back into it, but when you have negative number, numbers underneath a radical, a, cu a cube, or an odd number, it's totally fine. It's just that negative number, numbers under a square root or an even power root um, give you problems. So this is the reason why, but the shortcut of canceling, you just basically get exactly what you have underneath. All right. Now let's take a, another example. Let's say we have um, 7 squared, and we're going to take the square root of that. Right? Notice this is an even power with an even power. So we're still canceling it, but when n is even, we're canceling it, but what ends up happening is you take the, the absolute value of what's underneath. And that basically comes about because no matter what's under here, you square it, you always get a positive value. So you're always gonna get a positive answer on the end. I've already gone over that in the last lesson, so if you haven't seen it, go, please go back and do that. The bottom line is you cancel it, so you're gonna get the absolute value of seven, so you're gonna get seven. So it, just basically comes out. But if the question that you had was, let me go over here to the right actually. If the question you had was negative seven squared, and you were gonna take the square root of that, the cancel and the cancellation, you would think you would just get negative seven for your answer, but really you would get the absolute value of that, which means you would get seven. And that's actually the exact same thing I worked in the last lesson. I don't think it's um, too weird to give the same problem over and over again, because I mean, honestly, it's. It's just important that you understand that. So when you're canceling a square root and a square, go ahead and take the absolute value of whatever is left over. And to drill that home, that it applies to other powers, um, what if you had negative seven raised to the fourth power, but then you were kind of cancel that with a fourth root? Again, this is even. That's this rule, it's even. So you do cancel it, but you take the absolute value of what's left over. So it cancels, but instead of a negative seven, you take the absolute value to get seven, all right? Same sort of thing, if you have a positive seven to the fourth power, taking the fourth root, you do a cancellation, but whatever's left over, which is just in this case positive seven, go ahead and take the absolute value. That's the easiest way to remember it. When it's even like this, like all of these, whatever's left over, take the absolute value. When it's odd like this, you don't ever have to do that. You just take what's left over. And to illustrate that last point, we'll do one more, where what if I have, um, seven to the fifth power, and I'm gonna cancel it with a fifth root. I don't have to do any absolute value, the fifth root cancels with this, I'm just gonna get seven left over. If I have negative seven to the fifth power, and I'm gonna cancel that with a fifth root, the fifth root cancels with the fifth power, leaving me negative seven. I don't do any absolute values and such, because we've already gone through all of that. When n is odd, you just get what's left over. You can still get negative values uh, that can come out of those, those odd number roots. So when the root is even and you're canceling it with uh, an, e, an uh, I'm sorry, an odd, when you're canceling an odd root with an odd power and they're canceling it, then it just comes out. Whatever is left over comes out. Same thing down here, you can get negative positive answers. But when the root is even that you're canceling with an even power, you have to take the absolute value of what's left over. And that is, I guess I was gonna say I was, I was done, but I have one more that I wanna do for you. So let's think about this with variables. If I have a to the sixth power, and I'm going to have a cube root, this is not a real cancellation now, this is slightly different. This is just a cube root of a to the sixth power. How do I handle that? I do a factor tree. So what I'm gonna have here, this is gonna be a cubed times a cubed, because they add to give six. This will be a times a times a, and this one will be a times a times a and I'm looking for triplets. So I have a triplet here, and I have a triplet here. So this comes out as an A, this comes out as an A, giving me A squared. That's the final answer. This wasn't really one of those cancellation problems, but it's just using the, the factor tree to multiply it out and get to the answer. Now this is one of those cases. If I have A to the sixth power, and I'm going to cancel it, so to speak, with a cube or a sixth root here, then basically it's an even power, right? It's an even power. So you would think they would just cancel like this, but, and it does give you an A that's left over, but it's an absolute value of A. It's an absolute value of A. 
because of this exact same reason. It's an even um, power. It's an even power, so when you cancel it, you get the absolute value of what's left over. We've done it with numbers enough times that you can hopefully see that if you stick a negative value for A in here, you're gonna do this multiplication, it's gonna give you a positive number, which will then give you a positive answer which won't equal the negative that you had in here. So it only this equality only works if A is positive. That's why we have to say that the answer is actually the absolute value of A, all right? Um, yeah, sixth root canceling with six. And you could think of this as a factor tree. Six, a, a times A times A, six times, you're looking for a grouping of six. You pull it out, it cancels, but only whenever A is positive. So this was the concept of cube roots and higher uh, radicals beyond that. You can have any, any root or any radical with a you know fourth root, fifth root, 10th root, 11th root. But in practice, in real science and engineering, you don't get really much more past cube roots, occasionally fourth roots, but really, square root is by far the 99, uh, 99 percentile, the, the, the 100 pound gorilla in the room. It's, it's what is always in, in so many equations out there in real life. Lots of equations from physics and chemistry and engineering always have square roots running around. It's just very, very common. Cube roots also come about and every now and then a fourth root, but most of the time you're gonna run into square roots. So I hope you understand this. Solve all of these yourself. And then in the next lesson, we're going to start to tie and bridge the gap between these nth roots that we've been doing and the fact that these nth roots can be thought of as exponents that are actually fractions. So we're gonna introduce the idea of a fractional exponent in the next lesson. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.